Content and trigger warning. In this episode, we discuss mental health issues and specifically harming oneself. And, and, and I'm looking, looking back, back, I'm just, just like, like, you know what? what? None, None of that, that matters. Who cares if you got in because of the high school you went to or, or because, because you're black or another, another you know, minority? minority. Does, Does it change what work you're doing and, and the work, work you did to got, get yeah. there? No. You know, you know what I mean? mean? Like, like if you, you really, really think, think about, about it, it doesn't change anything. You still put in the work to get, you know, you wouldn't have gone there if you were lazy and got all Fs, right? In high school. So, so you put, put in some work, work. even if, 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 just because you don't have an A, it doesn't mean you did it, right? right. So that's, so that's what, what I just I always try to remind myself, myself with imposter system. Welcome, Welcome back, back, everyone, to the Time, time to Talk About, about podcast, podcast with me, Noble. Noble. And me, Eden. And, and, and um, we're, we're, we're happy, happy to uh, have, have you all listening. listening. This is our second episode. episode. And, and today, today we thought that it would be time to talk about, or it is time, time to talk about, about college. And, and so, so that's, that's what we're going to tackle today. today. Obviously, that's, that's a big topic, topic and there's many things we want to discuss when we say talk about college. But today we're going to talk about Sort of, sort of the experiences, experiences we've had, had in college, college and, and I guess, I guess the, general the general shared experience, experience that, that you have as a college, college student in the 21st century. century. So, so um, Eden, Eden and I are, I are both college students. students. Um, I'm, I'm at college, college um, in Charlotte. Charlotte. Eden's, Eden's at college back at home. And, and um, I'm, I'm studying studying computer science. science. And I, I am a senior. So I've been in college for a little while. Um, but, but Eden, you're, you're, you're sort of the opposite end of the spectrum. spectrum. Yeah, so um, I'm studying biology, um, and I'm a freshman. Um, so I just started back in August, um, and it's been a really interesting experience. I'm very excited to talk about that today. Yeah, yeah so um, um, where are we going to start? Yeah, um, I guess <laughs> we should start with the academics. We kind of already um, opened that floor up a little bit, but there's definitely a lot to talk about. So like I said, I'm a bio major. Noble, you're a comp sci major, right? Yes, yes. Computer, computer science for those who don't know. Because I, I say comp, comp sci a lot, and I forget most people don't <laughs> you say that unless, unless they're, they're comp sci majors. So, so that's, that's computer, computer science, science. technology. Yeah, <laughs> I honestly feel like the only reason I say that is because I have you as a brother. And you yeah, say yeah. <laughs> I say it all the time, yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, I guess like with my career goals, I'm looking to become a pharmacist. Um, I always joke like, oh, like, drug dealer, haha, or like a <laughs> joke. Um, yes. But yeah, I really want to become a pharmacist. Um, I'm doing a chem minor, so I have a long road ahead of me, but I'm actually really excited. I guess I've always really liked science as a whole. So um, I guess being able to um, pursue a career in that is very intriguing to me. Um, Noble, your career? Yeah. Career? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, say you've always, always loved science, science and, and chemistry, chemistry especially, especially. And, and you're really good at it. it. I could not, <laughs> I could not <laughs> go, go that, that type of science route, I fear. But um, um, yeah, yeah for, for, I'm a comp sci major, like I said, computer science, because um, I've, I've always loved technology since, since I've been a kid, kid and, and I guess, I guess my, my dream has been to work in the tech industry and sort of be a part of the the next generation, creating the next generation of technology, you know? Um, so, um, so I think, I think that's, that's still a goal, goal but also, also um, I've become, become really passionate more recently about um, bringing computer, computer science education to K-12 students, students, especially middle school and early, early high, high school and even elementary school. 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 Um, just because when I was in elementary and middle school, school I, I didn't really know about science as a field or any of the career options. And I had no clue what coding was or anything like that. And I wish, looking back, I had known, because I would have been able to learn things a little quicker. <laughs> so um, just being able to, I'd love to be part of uh, making computer science a more representative space. And we'll talk, I'm sure we'll talk more about that in some other discussions at some point in this podcast. But, you know, computer science of many fields is very white and very male. And, and we've, we've noticed, noticed that, that a lot, lot. yeah. <laughs> Not during Black History Month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this, this February, February, we're going, we're going there. there. Um, um, but yeah, yeah I, and I, we've noticed, noticed that, that it's because, because 
of education. education. It starts with education that most schools that teach computer, computer science are majority white, white, especially, especially in K through 12. And on top of that, that um, underrepresented students, minority students, students don't always have those opportunities to learn about computer science outside of school, like at summer camps and things like that. It's a whole lot of things I don't want to get too into because we'll have episodes where we talk about technology. So let me not go too far on that tangent, but that's like one of my career goals to sort of um, be part of computer science education in some way. Not necessarily as a teacher per se, but maybe teach it in some way. Um, I've volunteered at schools to teach coding and that's been a lot of fun. So maybe more of that, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that like in general, um, the spectrum of what a career is needs to be broken down more and more intuitively mm -hmm. for um, kids in grade school. And I guess this episode isn't really about grade school, but that's something that I think a lot about because when it's you're true. young, when you're young, you really only hear about like, you know, like the big jobs, like doctors, that's it, just doctors and co. Lawyers, and like, yeah, 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 teachers yeah, and no, that's kind of sure. Yeah, yeah, it's true. true. Like, there's so much, there's so many other things to do. I feel like for almost every need in society, there is a job for it. So you can find something that you're genuinely interested in. And I feel like right. grade schools and the culture surrounding them doesn't really do a good job of exposing that to students, you know? Yeah, yeah that's so, so true. true. I mean, I, mean, I, was, I was talking, talking with, with a friend the other day. day. Um, he's, he's a, a bio major, major here. here. Um, I work, I work with him, with him. And, and he was, was saying, saying how, you know, he's, he's doing, doing biology because he likes science, science, but he honestly doesn't, doesn't really know what he wants to do with it. it. He, doesn't he doesn't know what career he wants to go in at all. And, and I was talking, I was like, you know, I feel like where we fail, one area where we fail in America with K-12 education is that we don't put a lot of time on career exploration and discovery. If we do, it's not until high school. And it's very like, like maybe an event here, an event there, a little chapter here, a little chapter there. There's not a class or anything where students can really explore different careers and see that there's more than doctor, lawyer, teacher, police officer, firefighter. That's always what it is, you know? Um, and I think that's why we get so many kids who come to college and they honestly don't know what they ha they want to do. And that's why all these colleges now are starting these exploratory programs, you know, exploratory studies, undecided, like colleges are leaning more into that because a lot of people don't know what they want to do when they get to college. And that's okay. You don't have to know right away. But I think there's a systemic reason for that. It comes from somewhere. But the real problem is when they think they know what they want to do, and they choose a major, and then they realize they don't like it halfway through college, and then they have to switch and go back and take different classes. It all stems from, in my opinion, K through 12. Especially because like in other countries, like in the UK I hear, I mean, I don't know much about the UK education system, but from what I've heard, like they they have like tracks when they're in school. And so they start out like learning stuff in the different subject areas. And then they sort of kind of specialize and go on a track. So like by the time they're, they're graduating high school and then they take their version of the SAT or whatever, they, they like, like are, they're, they're almost, almost like certified. certified. And if, if somebody, somebody is from, from the UK, UK like, listening, you, you can, can write in and correct me if I'm wrong. wrong. Cause you can write reviews and, and we should talk about that even. People can write reviews, oh, yeah. and also they can leave voice messages if they voice are messages. listening on. Uh, yeah, if you're listening on on Spotify or on the Anchor page, you can go to the Anchor page and, and leave a voice message, and we can listen to it and play it in the episode later. So do that if you want to say hi or if you want to correct me about this. <laughs> but what if someone curses us out? Like, well, <laughs> we get to hear them before we put them in the episode. So, <laughs> but um. But yeah, so by the time they're like finishing high school, like they have an idea of what areas they're strong in and they probably have studied, specialized in those areas, you know? Um, that's just an example, but uh, I don't know how, how you feel high school has prepared you for college, but a lot of people I've talked to, a lot of college students feel like their high school experience was fun and games, <laughs> or even if it wasn't, like they didn't, it didn't prepare them for college or what career they wanted to, you know, go into. Mm hmm. I mean, mm, I, I like we'll definitely get to that, like the question of how well high school prepared us for college, because I feel like there's a very diverse array of answers from what I've heard. But I think that we should take the time to talk about being in STEM um, as a college student. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. Before we get to that, I think I, sh I think we should make the comment that like. 
college is different from like grade school in the fact that your academics are so closely intertwined with what you want your career to be. You know, I feel like before college, um, like when you're in school, you know, and you're taking classes, that's a very different outlook from like the job that you work, you know? Like a lot of people have jobs before they're 18, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. But, mm-hmm. you know, once you get to college, it's like, I feel like everything that you, everything that you do is in some way related to the career that you want, you know, like every yeah. class that you take. Like, well, well, with the exception, exception of like, like general education departments and, and stuff, because we still have, have those oh, yeah. in college. Yeah, obviously, obviously. And, and like some, some majors like, too that are like, like um, general, general majors in general, general maybe, maybe, but yeah, yeah for, for the, the most part. part. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how, how would you say being in STEM is? Um, especially being black, you know, and then yeah. also like being a guy, because I, I, I think that like, we definitely need to like, check our privilege a little bit. Like the fact that like, we are men in STEM already like that already kind of gives us a little bit of a boost, you know, because I feel like every time we, we talk about STEM, you know, people are already going to give us credibility because we are men. But I feel like, you know, for other people, like for a woman, for example, that might not be the case. That's definitely not the case. So um, yeah, that's one thing to keep in mind. And it does, but it does depend on what area in STEM, because STEM is a huge umbrella. And there are some fields like nursing that men are in the minority. So it definitely does. But I think we can speak for my career area and for your career area are definitely more male heavy, um, Mm -hmm. especially computer science. science. So So the the most most initiatives in computer science, science, um, there's there's this idea idea in this new movement movement in computer science education education that they call... um, BPC, Broadening Participation in computing, computing, and it's all based on this idea that we need more women and minority people, minority students in STEM and specifically in computer science. Because in computer science, which I the only thing I can speak for, there's definitely a, a, a great um, deficit, I guess, of both. Um, like there's a huge disparity there for sure. So yeah, for me, like I'm going to be more, I'm going to have mostly male colleagues. So on, on that level, you know, I will be fine. Now, the race is a different part of it, but in terms of, you know, <clears throat> my gender and sex is definitely way more male, you know? And, and, and unfortunately, I think we've seen too that a lot of these Silicon Valley companies, Fortune 500 companies, and et cetera, and even not the popular ones, even the smaller startups and stuff, have this like bro culture. Especially, Especially in computer, computer science. science. It's, it's a big thing in computer, computer science, science where it's like, you know, it's, it's all these guys, guys and, then and then there's a few women. women. And, and then sometimes, sometimes they take advantage of the woman. You know what I mean? I, I mean, mean, I don't I even mean just in terms of inappropriate ways, ways, ways like, like workplace, workplace wrong workplace relations, relations but I mean, I mean even, even just in like they're not treated fairly in the work that they're doing, you know? I've heard stories like people taking credit for women's work and stuff like that or not letting them be part of certain projects, you know? Of course, there's the you know, know, harassment harassment side of it as well. But But that's that's all part of this thing in computing called the bro bro culture. That is very problematic. And we've seen that with Uber. We've seen seen that with with a lot of companies. companies. But I think Uber was the big one that 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 lady came out a few years ago and wrote about it. But so yeah, as men in computer science, we are the majority and people have to keep that in mind on our side of things. Now, I can't speak for pharmacy, you know. But well, I um, I I'm hmm, for pharmacy. I'm actually like not sure, like not 100 percent sure. But it's definitely. I think it's in the, in medical, the medical field, field at least. least. It's mostly yeah, in the medical manner. field is definitely yeah male dominated as well. And so like there's a lot of like similar things to what like you were talking about. I mean, I feel like for myself, like when I get to that place, like you know, I want to be the, the, the type of person that doesn't like actively contribute to that. But then again, I kind of mm-hmm. feel like that's the bare minimum. So for me, it's like the question of like, what can I do to like make the workplace a better place? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Because there's not actively contributing contributing, and then then there's there's working working against it. it. Right. Two different things. I don't know. I think that's a question that I'm going to leave open to myself, you know? Um, Yeah. But yeah, 
I feel like being in STEM in general, though, especially whenever I tell people that I'm, like, a bio major, like, they're like, oh, my goodness, like, how, like, oh, that's hard, and da 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 And I know that yeah. like, most people don't mean it in, like, a malicious, like, way, but, like, it's not giving what you thought it gave when you say things like that. Like, <laughs> no, I'm so serious. Like, it, it actually, like, kind of feels like, yeah, like, you're doubting my ability, and I feel like sometimes I'm like, is it because I'm black? Like, I know, like, sometimes you ask that question as a joke, but I'm so serious, like... But all, we have to ask, ask it, because in STEM, you know, when it comes to race, black people are not the majority. Although they are growing. Like, I know I learned in my sociology course in high school that, like, um, the, the, the fact, like, in... For doctors specifically, uh, I believe the statistic was the, the race that is growing the most in terms of new doctors is black women. Like they're getting a lot more black female doctors now than ever before. So in some areas it's changing, but generally in STEM, you know, and in many things, you know, being a black person is already um, a disadvantage. So you always ask, you have to ask yourself that, unfortunately, I feel like at every turn. Yeah. It's true. People, people always say, say that, that. Like, like, especially non-STEM non people or people at home or whatever, they always be like, oh, wow, you're, you're in computer science. science. That must be hard. hard. You, you must be really smart. smart. And I'm, I'm like, like oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling too. We are all struggling. So that's the one thing about being in STEM. I feel like there's this, there's a nice, like, solidarity, <laughs> no matter what side of STEM you're in. Like, we all struggling, you know? Because mm-hmm. I, I talk to my computer science people, obviously, but I talk to engineering people. I talk, I talk to, to um, um, chem- chemistry, chemistry people, people and biology, biology people, science people, 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 nursing people. people and we're all like, yeah, that class, class was hard. hard. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that bio class, class was rough. rough. Since we all have to take those like gen ed ones. And then even in general, like the maths and stuff, like there's so much solidarity <laughs> there that it's all difficult. <laughs> no matter, matter which way you look at it. it. So, so that's, that's, that's one thing I do like about STEM. I feel like there's a lot of... Um, we, we share, share the, the uh, struggle, struggle which, which is, is nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> you just keep saying, yeah. 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 <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't yeah. do that. I'm just, bro, it's giving empty brain. But, like, um, like, in general, like, how well do you think that high school prepared you for, like, college? I mean, for myself, I'm going to go ahead and answer that question. Sorry, I asked that question, and then I kind of, like, cut you off before you even started. But I'm going to answer that question for myself. I think for myself, the high school that I went to, and specifically, like, the track that, like, I took was, like, and we've had this conversation before, um, I think the track that I took was very rigorous to begin with, so, honestly, like, in my first semester, like, academically, first semester of college was, like, a piece of cake, like, I'm not gonna lie to you, you know, can you hear that, the, the siren? It was, it's very quiet, it's very faint. Okay, so I'll not really, it, but I hope that person's okay. But yeah, I feel like academically, like it was a breeze. Um, but yeah. there's a lot of other things that high school does not like. Considering college, that high school does not like prepare you for like at all. I feel like even like like the amount of professionalism that is. First of all, I do not like professional culture. Let's establish this fact. Like I think like it's important in theory so that you can get things done, but. Wait, what, Wait, what, is, what, is, what is, professional is professional culture? culture? Let's, Let's define, define it, it in case like, people are not, not clear. clear. Like, okay, like, uh, oh, come on. Like, whenever people ask me to, like, define stuff, I can't do it. But I don't know. It's like, like, when you, when, you, when, you when you're writing an email. Right, say that. What, what do you mean by it? Well, okay, like, when, when you're writing an email, for example, right? Like, you have to use specific conven- conventions and, like, things like that. And if it's not written in that way, then it's like, oh, you know, I just, I don't know. Well, that's, well, that's really, really important, important though, though, because, because it's, it's like, like a lot, a lot of, of those like professional, professional things that we do in college, college we're, we're learning, learning for the workforce, workforce really, like, like where, where that, that is going to be yeah, expected. expected. So, so like, like, like the email, email thing, thing, that's important. important. Yeah, I, I guess. Feel. I don't know. It's just very, I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of people kind of use that to be, I don't know, to have like, higher ground 
on someone else. I don't know if when I'm well, saying, there, there, there can, can always be a, a negative side to something, to something so. so. Yeah. I'm sure that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, in this, 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 oh, sorry, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say that, um, like, in terms of, like, professionalism, I don't think high school prepared me very well. Like, you could kind of just, like, do whatever, which is, like, yeah, like, that part. Kind of, like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But in college, everything is, like, I would say a lot more structured, like, in terms of, like, the realm of professionalism. But then also, when it comes to... Yeah, I guess I, academics in general, right? Because like, just because it prepared me well for academics doesn't mean that, like, everything's the same, right? You're prepared. You're prepared. Academics in high school is it's not very, all. It's not just academics. Yeah. Right. Academics in high school is very, very, very structured, like very structured. But in college, it's not at all. No, but when I tell you, I almost cried over class registration. I. It was terrible. It was terrible. Of course. Was yeah, yeah, that's, that's a part of it. Like literally, like I was like. Back in November, I had like one credit hour for the one credit hour. Noble, wh one credit. Are we like, is this clicking? One credit hour for the entire semester. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I've been in college for how long now? <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Wow. But like, this, this semester, semester was, was probably my best, best registration. registration. Probably yeah, because I was, I was a senior and I have priority pretty much. much. Mm -hmm. So I don't usually have trouble. Yeah, Unless it's a class that I have to take. Still. Yeah. But like, like freshman and sophomore year, the class registration thing is like impossible. It's giving it's mental it is. Sometimes. 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 Actually, and it's just like, I, I think like my school, like in particular, like shout out to my school because my school knows what school my school is, period. But <laughs> you know you who know you, you are. are. <laughs> yeah, you know who you are. No, this is literally, you know who you are. Because why is it that we yeah. use this trash system? Ooh. Like, I, I don't want to say the name because then I'll be exposing myself. Spill. But this trash yeah. system for classroom. Can you say the name of the It looks like it was built in 1992. I will expose them too. Right. And this school, at its that dinosaur age, at its dinosaur age, <laughs> they can't figure out. You know out who you are. How, like, you know who you are. You can't figure out how to make a, a better class registration system. Like, it should I not know. if it's fresh out of, like, 1985. Like, I'm yeah. so serious right now. The stress that caused me made no sense. When I was in high school, you could talk to the counselor to get you into any class. They would do it. End of sentence. Period. But yeah. here? But there's a lot school, less. Like, out of reach. Like, yeah, there's, there's a, a lot less. out of reach. I think, I think that we have to say there's a lot less, less um, obviously, obviously there's, there's a lot less variety in, call, in class in high school to college, so, so it's easy for one person to deal with it. it. But, but yeah, yeah, and then some of these advisors to in college are also professors. So, yeah. you know, so advising, advising is there, they have to do it. You know, they don't want to, they have to. That's why I love my advisor at state because of the college I was in, Equatory Studies. Like, I, that was their only job. Because, because those, those students, students don't know what they want to do, do, they need people to advise them. So they're, they're back in their own only job to advise and teach that one class that is an advising class, what we can call the class. So yeah. she, she was, was always ready. ready. But here, we'll leave it. Away. You, you said, said I don't need to say that. My undergraduate advisor doesn't talk to me. Ah, anyways. Oh, not that, but she was still. The graduate, yeah. He's a little he can, he, um, can more. Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> I feel like, um, like, because I took, like, a, a lot of APs in high school. Like, a lot of APs. And, like, the, the difficulty of the class, because those are college classes. Like, the difficulty of the classes, like, was, you know, it was definitely, I would say it was probably equal to, like, high school, pretty equal to high school, to college. Come on, English. Come on. Um, it, it was equal to what I'm seeing in college, for sure. Um, but I also feel like the AP curriculum, like, that school does too much for no reason. Like, I feel like, um... Which what AP, AP classes did you, did you feel matched what you saw in college? Um, let me see. I think AP chemistry surpassed it, for sure. Because that class, that class ate me up like, like spaghetti. I'm so serious. Yeah. Um... Well, that class that is just to cover you for, like, the first two. two. Most, Most AP, AP classes are, like, the first class... class. The first level or yeah, the first, first and second, second level, level, maybe. So, so you will get yeah, well past it in college. But yeah, it's just so with the cover your Chem 101 and Chem 102. Or Chem 101 and Chem 201, depending on what people call it. But, um... Um, but yeah. Yeah. So, like, that one definitely prepared me. I would say the two AP English classes I took, the Lang and the Lit, those ones also prepare me really well for college English. Because I, like, you only have to take, like, one English class, at least where I am. 
Um, and that class was miles easier than what I had to take. And I think it's because of the structure of AP. Like, college classes, like, I feel like may maybe the material itself might be, like, explained in a different way that makes it harder. But, like, AP in general, like, they have very specific criteria. So you could, like, know the stuff and, like, not write it to the, like, specified criteria. And then you won't get points. Or you got it wrong. Even though, like, in theory, it's correct, you're not doing it in the way the AP wants you to, so it's not mastery, you know? Whereas in college, you don't see that. Like, most professors don't care about the, the little things that AP cares about. That's been my... Well, well that's because the, the AP and the college, college work people, people, you have to remember, remember they, they have, have their, their own standards. standards. Like, like, in, in college, college there, there is, is a way, way you're expected to write, to write but I, mean, I, don't I don't think, think it's, it's the same as the AP one. one. They have their way of doing it. So, so, and I, I think, think that's, that's why nor a lot of people, people when they come to college, college, English, I remember when I took my first English class at, at state, state, we had, had we read an article about this. this. A, lot a lot of high schoolers coming to college are not actually English because, English because most high school English, English does not really teach them to write in the way college wants them to write. So it's like they have to relearn it. So I think I wanted to say too earlier, I think, you know, before we get too far into this whole college conversation, we should have a disclaimer that, first off, everybody's college experience is different, and that is okay. We're just sharing, you know, we're obviously just sharing ours. And I think then also we should say that there's, obviously we have our individual experiences, but there's also a general shared experience that we all have that we were talking about, like certain things that apply to all of college students in general, right? And I think for you and I, we both had High schools that prepared us pretty decently for college, although oh, yeah. maybe not perfect. I mean, there's still a lot of things I had to learn, that's for sure. But, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people may not have, you know. And I've learned that talking to people throughout four years that most people go to your typical public high school, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a switch for them <laughs> when they came freshman year. And it just depended on how good of a student they were in terms of managing their time and stuff like that. To how quickly they adjusted to it, you know. But um, but yes, continue with what you were saying. For the AP classes, it was the English and the um, science ones that you felt were pretty um, matched with the difficulty of the entry college courses, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, and I feel like um, yeah, yeah, I would say that they they were they definitely like matched the best. Um, and that's been like really interesting, but I also feel like, um, one thing that's different, like, even though I took like all these AP classes is the fact that teachers in high school went to school to learn how to teach. Whereas a lot of these professors, like they are not teachers by profession, like, like they, yeah. they teach, but like, like they're not the teachers. Yeah. So frankly, a lot of them don't know how to teach. Like, I'm not going to mm -hmm. lie, like, you can be, like, a, you can be really, really, really good in your field, and all these people are. Like, the school I go to, everyone is, like, top of their field. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't make them good teachers, you know? So that's also definitely been, like, somewhat, like, of, of a learning curve, because some things have not been, you know, like... Yeah. yeah. Like, it's, one, it's, one, it's, like, it's very, very interesting. interesting. And you and can, you can kind, kind of tell who is... is a professor, a professor who's tenured and being paid to do research and is not really a yeah, teacher no, if, if compared to the ones who are like used to be a lot of professors used to be high school teachers and then switch to being professors. You can tell the difference a lot of times. Yeah. If I walk in the classroom and there's like a whole essay on the slides, I know the teacher doesn't teach. <laughs> like they just write up the slides. Like it, bam, if I wanted to go to a book, yeah. I would have signed up for that. You know yes, what I mean? like, like why are you the PowerPoints up there with like 14 point font? font. <laughs> All oh, these words on one, one slide. Like, please, 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 please summarize. summarize. <laughs> please. <laughs> hey, so yeah, that's that's definitely one thing. So I feel like um, how about high school prepared me was, mm, you know, very. Uh, very you're like, like so yours is okay. okay. Like, like you, high school yeah, yeah I, I would say it's pretty okay. Yeah, but you would say it's more academics than. Oh yeah, the other and like the practicality, yeah. Because there's definitely stuff that you have to learn as well, like you know, learning how to do stuff by yourself is a huge thing. A yeah, huge the thing. professionalism. I think, I think grading too is a big, big thing because grading, grading the stakes, stakes are so much higher, higher in college. college. It's, it's like, like you, you take one step, step and it's like, like <laughs> you, you miss that too much. 
you know. Yeah. yeah. But um, but that you you can you just you know, shortly after getting to college, you you will see. So you, that doesn't oh. take that long. <laughs> you know what else? Um, I feel like there's like a general archetype of like a mean professor. Like I feel <laughs> like like when you when especially when you're in high school, like people make professors sound like mean people. Like, but yeah. I feel like the vast majority of them, like, are they're pretty nice. Like, if you ask for help, they're gonna yeah. help you. Like, a I'm lot of them do exactly care, where this is coming from. Though, I think it's because there's so many of the tenured ones that mm. you know are just there for research. But a lot of them, even though they are, they do care. Like, some of them do have a passion for teaching, even if they didn't go to school for teaching. You know, they do have a passion for helping people learn. Like my, you know, you know, I'm taking my um. I'm in, so I said before, I'm in my senior year of my undergraduate studies, but I'm also starting my master's studies at the same time. So I'm taking my first master's class this semester, and I really like my professor. Like, he, he is a PhD. He, I believe, is the CEO of a company and the co-CEO of another company, and then he's on the board of director of, like, three other companies. He's very busy. He's very accomplished. When you put his name in Google, the little thing pops up. You know, you know the little, the little like knowledge, knowledge thingy that pops up on the side for like celebrities, something like that pops up for him, but it's like Google Scholar, it's like all the papers he's written. He's, he's very accomplished, he's very intelligent. intelligent. Um, um, and he's and a really he's nice, nice guy. guy. It, it, now, is he the best teacher? I don't know. The jury is still out. But, um, and his class is interesting. But, but he, he does, does really try, try to um, engage, engage us. us. He's, he's not, not a bad, bad teacher. teacher. I would say I would he, say he, he is, is a pretty good teacher. teacher. He, he does, does, you know, give us a lot of work because it is graduate, graduate school. school. But, but despite, despite his accomplishments and the fact that he's not trained to be a teacher, he's very nice, you know. And he he's really funny, honestly. He cracks me up. And there are a lot of, I've come across a lot of nice professors. So I definitely say that, like, don't think, think if you're, you're about to go to college, don't think that every professor is evil. A lot of them are nice. And our understanding, but at the same time, you have to do your part as a student. Like, they're not, they're not going to take nonsense. nonsense you know? Yeah, yeah, it's about taking initiative. Um, yeah, but, but there, there are, are plenty, plenty of bad, bad ones, ones too. too. <laughs> so, so, like, like don't, don't be fooled. fooled. <laughs> I also feel like, um, okay, like back to the thing I was saying about like professionalism. Like, I think maybe like saying I dislike it is not like that's probably not the right message. Like, that's that's probably not like what, exactly what I was trying to say. I think uh, it's more so like maybe you feel like people are not themselves. They're not being able to be themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like I mean, I I will be professional because I understand that that's like necessary, right? Right. Um. But I also feel like um. Sometimes like people are just like like they 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 don't feel comfortable because they can't really express. You know, I don't know. That's the way. I yeah, do. like I'll I'll do. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah, and that is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me, in terms of my high school experience and how it prepared me, um, I had a kind of a roller coaster journey <laughs> for my high school experience, and I ended up going to two different high schools. Um, but the second one that I graduated from. I do, I do feel, feel like, like it prepared me pretty well. well. Um, mm -hmm. It's, I'm trying, I'm trying to, think, to think, how can how I say it without revealing too much? So, so my high school is, the one, the one I graduated, I graduated from, from, is actually part, part of a college school, school system. system. Mm -hmm. actually, actually, the, the same, same system, system as the college I go to now. And, and so, so they sort of run everything like a college. And it's, you know, you live on campus um for two, two years, years junior senior year and there's actually a lot of high schools like, like that now across, across the country, country. But, but my high school is actually one of the first to pioneer this sort of model and then there's a lot of we call them sister schools that have popped up in other states and stuff but basically um you go there for your junior and senior year and you live on campus um and you know you have your classes and stuff but your class schedule is built very much like a college schedule so it's not you have seven classes. You can have seven classes a day if your college schedule ends up working that way, but <laughs> normally no, you don't, don't uh -uh. you know. not You don't have every class every day type thing. You know, you have breaks between hopefully you might have a terrible 8 a.m. I had a lot of those. So it did really get me in the mindset, but it was a really, you know, 
tough experience. It was a very rigorous school academically and mentally and everything. So those two years, I always say, were the hardest two years of my life. They were really tough. But I do feel like because I was challenged there, I really grew. So when I entered college freshman year in 2018, which feels so long now, do you ever think about that? Well, you just are starting college. But like, I think about when I graduated high school and I feel so old just thinking about it. Cause like, there are people graduating high school now and I graduated high school almost four years ago. Like that's insane to me. Yeah. It's weird. Anyways. <laughs> um, that time is not real. It's not, especially in this pandemic. It just ceased to exist at this point. But um, yeah, it was tough and it prepared me, but it was, it was a, a really stressful really experience, which I'm sure we'll talk about some other time. time. But, but so I do feel like it really prepared me. My fre first semester, semester freshman year, it was difficult because college is difficult. Like, it was not a walk in the park. park. But, but it, it was, was not the hardest thing. thing. Like, it was, it was not, not harder than the two years at in high school. school. That's for sure. Mm. The first semester. The only hard class I had was Chem 101, to be honest. The rest of my classes I was sailing by with ease. And Chem 101, 101 thankfully, I ended up making a B. B? Yeah, yeah, I ended up making a B. B. So, so thank God it ended well. It was tough. Because <laughs> I was always bad at chemistry. And then um, my, my second, second semester was a little bit harder because I was taking calculus, calculus for the first time. time. And, and I didn't, didn't have any experience with it. So that was rough. rough. But, but I ended up doing okay in there, too. But it wasn't really till my sophomore year that I really started, like, getting the real college experience. This is hard, you know? Sophomore year, year was really rough. rough. So, so I would say my high school prepared me decently to a degree, degree. Um, probably, probably better, better than, than most because my high school was not a normal high school. school. And, and we, we did have a lot of opportunities for career exploration and stuff like that that we don't normally have at high schools. But there were still a lot of things I had to learn. And I think college is one of those things where people can tell you how it is for them, but it may not be how it is for you. There's some things they just can't explain to you until you get there. And that's why sometimes adults, even ones who've been to college, but they're older, and so it's been a while, they don't really get it. Because obviously college is different now than it was. Very different. 15 Very years ago, 20 years ago, and, and even further. Especially with technology and all that stuff, it has literally revamped college as a whole and education as a whole. But um, yeah, so I would say high school prepares for it. But I, like I said before, I think we have to um, acknowledge that most people, or I, let me say a lot of people, because I don't know if it's actually most, do not feel that all that prepared, you know? Mm -hmm. so I, I've, I've talked to a lot of people who their high school journey, the whole four years was easy. They were getting all A's with E's. And then they come in freshman year, you know, and they think they can do that kind of like, I don't really have to study. I kind of just look at it real quick and it goes in my brain and then I take the test. And then it doesn't work in college <laughs> and they struggle in. Like some people get F's their first semester. It happens, you know, and that's normal, honestly. Like people, st we stigmatize bad grades sometimes because nobody wants to get one, but it's normal <laughs> to, to fail a class here or there. My but yeah. Is like, oh, sorry, I interrupted like twice. No, that, that's all pretty much I would say about my high school preparation. So I was done. <laughs> like based on your comment about like, um, like how like a lot of adults like don't really get it. Like, I definitely have, like, I resonate with that. Um, I feel like, okay, before I say this, disclaimer, um, I'm, I know I'm very privileged to be able to go to college, um, and to be yes. able to have an education, because a lot of people don't have that. Yes, um, we're not complaining. Very, yeah, we're and, not complaining. On this podcast, per se, we're pointing out the issues. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like, there, and there are definitely issues, and I feel like students that are going through a lot need to be free to point out the issues because it has to do with us and it has an effect on us you know yeah you know i knew that college had changed like the moment i knew was one time when i was talking to my mom about the, i think like i had like an exam this is like last semester i knew that it had changed when i was talking to her and i was like you know i'm not really sure how to study for this right ma'am replies Oh, you know, just read over your notes. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, ma'am. Yeah. No, ma no, 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 no. Like, I mean, that I'm worked in high like, school, but work. child. It's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work it's here. It's not going to work. Like, it's going to go in and it's going to empty itself right back out. You know. So that's, that's one like difference. That. 
for sure. sure. Like teachers have gotten, professors professors have gotten gotten more creative creative with the way they test and the way they they ask questions. It's It's not just going to be straight from the book, like as it's written anymore. And technology has really allowed them to do that. And that's the difference between her college experience and your and my college experience. That technology is so much more involved. But the thought was there. The thought was definitely there. You know, the um the support was in the right place. Yeah, it was the accuracy. The heart was in the right place. But you know, some words can be more harmful than helpful. Um. Okay, mental health. Yeah, we need to talk about mental health. Time to talk about because it's very wishy washy. Let's talk. about Yes, it's okay to feel like you don't know what you're doing. That's like our mantra here. Yeah. No, because as I've gotten older, I've realized that nobody knows what they're doing. Like, oh, yes. almost, like I guarantee you, like everyone puts up a front. Nobody knows. Oh, yes. Everybody's, mm-hmm. everybody's confused. I was everybody's gonna bring this like, up. Shoot, like I don't know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Yep. My dad doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> oh, that lizard. He did. No, no one knows what they're doing. I guarantee you, the president of the United States probably does not like. There's times when he doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Biden, Biden don't know. That. Especially That's when the Republicans, the Republicans are giving him trouble, trouble and he's like, like, you know, I don't even know how the way out of this. I know he's struggling, but like he work, he he works through it. I'm sure. Um. So it's okay to feel like like you really don't know like what you're doing. Um. Like college. I sorry. Finish your thought though. Okay, I was gonna say like when I when I came right about October ish, I like was seriously contemplating like leaving the school I'm at, cause like in my mind it was like what am I doing here? Like I don't like anything here. I don't like the atmosphere. I don't like the people. That's a lie. I love the people. I don't know why I was lying to myself, but still, like I just really didn't know what I was doing. Also, I was <coughs> thinking about like the career path that I had chosen because. I guess, like, for myself, like, I love having control over situations, and I've been, like... Everybody sure does. Career path. Yeah, I've, I've been sure of this career path for, like, quite a while now, and I feel like at that point of time, that was kind of starting to crumble. Like, I wasn't really sure, you know? So I didn't know what I was mm-hmm. doing, and that sent me for a huge spin, like, spin cycle, you know? Um, <laughs> cycle. Then, Not spin uh, cycle. No, because no, we were just talking about the laundry rooms, because why are they always dirty? I'm sorry, Oof. that's off topic, but they're always dirty. Oof. Like, why is it? Why is Noah's flood in there every single time I walk in there? It's Noah's like, flood. Wait, do you no, guys actually. have the ones that you have to put coins in still, or are we advanced past that? So, okay, this is what happened. Our school realized that last semester the laundry was so trash that this semester they gave us free laundry. So we don't. Wait, have so, so previously, previously people, people had, had to, to put, put coins, coins at your school. school? No, but when I tell you college is a business, yeah, people, people had. Well, I mean, really. Really, like people, I don't know if they had to like put coins, like, like no, like we but you like, had, had to pay our cards. Yeah, you had to pay. Yeah. Delusion, delusion. delusion. Yeah. So, so you, you, but you, you had, had to put money, money on the card. card. Yeah. Oh, oh that's, that's delusion. delusion. Like, like here, it's just, just and here, here and the school I went to previously, it was just you know, it's part of your tuition and all that type of stuff. I don't understand why you're still like it's laundry, anyways. Yeah, but yeah, back to mental health. Sorry. Um. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I wanted, wanted to, to comment, comment on the acting, acting thing, because okay, I, I feel like, like coming to college and being in college now for so <laughs> what feels like an eternity, four years, years feels like a long time. time. It, 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 when, when you say, say it doesn't sound long, long but then you look back and like, wow, I really changed. But that it just really made me realize that like humans, all humans are good at acting at a fundamental level. I mean, I mean maybe, maybe not, not all in movies, movies but, but like, like we are actors. Oh, that's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we know, know it's true. true. But, but we are, are so good at pretending like, like we have it all together. together. And some, some people, people, you know, some, some people, people, they're so good at this, they should have Grammys right now. Or, or not, not Grammys, Grammys, that's yeah. music. You know, you know some, some of the girls, they, they would have Tonys, they would have, um, what's the other one? Emmys and the other one. I'm blanking. Golden Globes. Golden Golden Globes. Globes. The girls girls would have all the uh, acting awards because because some people people really just are good at pretending we have it all together. together. We We all do it, you know, because because it's hard to be vulnerable and and say, like, no, I don't actually have it all together. And so we kind of walk through life, and especially in college, like, we pretend like we know what we want to do. Everybody's 100% on what they want to do. And some people are, because some people have known it since they were a kid or whatever, and they figured it all out. But a lot of us haven't, you know? So, so that's, that's why, why the, the conversation, conversation I was having with my friend the other day, it, it was, was great because we were just talking. We're like, yeah, we don't really know what we're doing. And it's okay. You know, yeah, we're, we're, we're sort of going through life trying to figure it out. 
but, but um, yeah, but and it, even after college, like in adulthood, people pretend like they know what they're doing, and most people don't really. They just playing it by ear. So I know for myself, um, not you know, not having that type of control, like not being able to know what I'm doing, it, like it feels like walls are closing in on you. Like I'm being so candid right now. Oh, you know, for sure. It I felt like that at my first school, especially. It's scary. I, yeah, so at least sophomore year when everything was like crumbling in, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the major I want to do and do that. It feels like everything's falling on you. But that's humanity in general. Like, that's, in my opinion, I think that is the basis of the reason that we love conspiracy theories. Humans want to be able, we? <laughs> like humanity as a whole, I'm, I'm <laughs> humanity not as a whole, <laughs> people in general tend to, or let me say maybe it's the reason that conspiracy theories are so popular. We, we want, want, as humans, as humans want, want to be able to control, control everything, everything, and we, and we want, want to understand, understand everything. everything. And, when and when things, things happen, happen that we cannot control or and we cannot understand, understand like, like coronavirus, coronavirus then, then suddenly it's like, like oh, 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 we, we have, have to have, have an explanation for it, for it. or we, we have, have to have a way to control it. it. Like, like we're, we're, we're not comfortable with letting go sometimes. Sometimes we've got to let go and let go, you know. But, um, yeah, control, it's a tough thing, but it doesn't. At the same, At the same time, time, we do have, have to admit that, like, it does clear your mental health, and it's okay to feel like, like you know, you're just spiraling, spiraling a little bit because things are not in your control. control. If you, you can, can just, but then, then if we can just come to terms, terms with the fact that, you know, we're, we're not going to be in control of everything, that will help. Yeah. I think you have to understand that. Like, you have to understand that, like, you know, like, once you understand that this is a reality for more people than you, than just you, sorry. Um, I feel like that makes it a little bit easier, you know? Right. Like, it always feels like you're the only person going through it. Right. Like, you're not the only person going through it. You really aren't. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. I that's what someone needed to hear, because that's definitely what I needed to hear back, For sure. um, back in October. Um, yeah. Um, but, yeah, another thing is, like, for myself, I, like, upon coming to college, like, I had, like, a small identity crisis. Like, no one ever talks about you not knowing who you are or, like, no one ever talks about, like, that upon coming to college. And I know I didn't, like, I was not the only person who experienced this because I, I talked to some other people about this. Like, I remember, like, you know, coming in and just being flabbergasted at, like, the type of people that people were, right? And not even necessarily in a bad way, but almost in a way that I felt like I was not, like, having as much fun. Or, like, I just wasn't the best person I could possibly be as compared to those other people. Um, and that's probably where the negativity started. Like, comparing You saw people, people who were in tune with, with who they, they were, were. And, and felt like, like you were exactly. not in tune. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It always, it always starts when you compare, compare people, compare, compare yourself, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and then it never and goes well. Comparison is the thief of joy. I like. I'm so serious about that, guys. Um, yeah. But yeah, like, I think we need to <clears throat> we need to talk about that. We need to talk for about sure. how, like, because it's it's just like you don't know who you are for quite a while. And I think to this day, I still haven't really like figured it out. But I think I'm in a much better place now. You know, and it definitely plays with your mind like quite a bit because. I don't know, like, you come to college and you see people that, like, they have their finances in order. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they have stable relationships. Yeah. You know? I know and people then, who are ready, ready to buy a house. house. Like, like, they're right. college students, but they, they have, have the money and everything. They plan everything, everything through buy. I'm just like, huh? Right. They have yeah, the car, they have the house. Like, you don't have to be back with yet. Like, when, when, when you see that you're not there, you just don't know who you are. And that, that really right. sucks. And this, this is what I mean when I say that, like, college is so much more than just, like, college is life. Like, ew, that's not disgusting. But college is life. Like, that is not... Like, it's it not is. just grades and school and number. Like, like numbers. Sorry. Um, I don't know. And that's what makes it so much different from K-12. Like, it's that, that first, first step, step into the, the real, real world, world, you know? No. Right. The real, the real adult, adult world. world. And, and it's terrifying. terrifying. Some, Some days, days I get up, I'm like, I don't want to adult today. I'm tired. I, like, I just really don't want to adult, you know? Um, Yeah, I think... I think, I think we have to remember, remember we, it's easy, easy to forget when you're, you're in college, but I think we have to remember that, that everybody, everybody goes through a sort of identity crisis, crisis, I think, when, when you're growing up. Because, because yeah. as, as the, the age that we are now, in our late teens, in our early 20s, 20s like, like people, people in general, general humanity in general, you're trying to figure out who you are, what you're meant to do on Earth, 
um, what your purpose is type thing, you know, what you value and what you don't, you're kind of really solidifying it at, at this point in life. Anyway, so even if you don't go to college, like, you know, you're at a time where you're still learning and discovering things, you know? And so we have to be a little easier on ourselves in, in that sense, you know? Um, so, so yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, I think, think I definitely, definitely felt like that to a degree. degree. Um, I, I think, think for, for me, my identity crisis was in terms of professionalism, professionalism career. career. Like, like, like I don't really, really know where I'm going. going. Like, like I know, know, you know, I like technology. I know I'm doing computer science. And I know this is like sort of the path most people normally take to do it. But like, I don't really know what I want to do with that. People always like, oh, what are you majoring in computer science? Oh, what do you want to do with that? And I hate that question because I'm like, I don't know. Like, like, yes, yes yeah. I, guess I guess the obvious thing is go work, work for a, a nine-to-five nine corporation, corporation, you know, you know tech, tech company. company. But, but, like, it's, it's, there's, there's more, more to it than that, that obviously. obviously. And, like, and I, don't I don't know, know the ins and outs yet. I hate it when people ask that. that. Like, <laughs> you're just people just being nosy about what you're doing in school. I'm like, can it just... Can't my, can't my major, major just be enough? enough. Mind your business. Yeah. Your yeah. Business. I mean, I, mean, I know, know it's, it's, it's different, different when you have a career, a, a, a major like, like, like biology, biology or something like that. that, that maybe it's not a, a direct, direct career path. path. Yeah. But, but um, <laughs> like, like I kind of expect it there. That people are going to be like, okay, well, you know, what are you going to do with that? Because your major is nothing. Is what people think sometimes. But I thought that. Computer, computer science, science is pretty straightforward straight because everybody, everybody kind of does the same thing, thing with it, even though you, you can, can branch, branch off. off. But, but I guess I not, not, too. too. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, I think, also imposter syndrome, right? Yeah, yeah I was going to say that, say that next. next. Especially mm -hmm. when you see people that, like, have, like, there's people that have job offers lined up. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I don't know. It's, it's very, very normal, normal in computer, computer science, science, for sure. sure. Because the idea in computer science is that ideally, you're supposed to have an internship start, starting the summer of your sophomore year. For if you can, can get in freshman, freshman grade. And, and every, every I mean, not crazy good, but still. Yeah, good, but it's like, this is the way. And it's like, if you don't follow it, you're kind of doomed. That's the way they paint it, right? So you have your yeah. internships lined up and you build relationships with all these companies. And then by the time you graduate, they're giving you job offers. That's great and all. You know, and it happens a lot of times, but like, you know, I didn't get my first internship until this past, was it this past summer? Yeah. I really don't know what time is at this point. So like, I get summer 2021 and summer 2020 mixed up. It was kind of just all one summer to me. <laughs> I grouped together because of Corona. I do. It, it, it was, that's probably because I graduated. No, it was different, but. Because, because it was all the pandemic, pandemic I, feel I feel like when I'm trying to remember, did I do this in 2020 or 2021? I just group it all together. <laughs> so, but yeah, I believe it was, yeah, it was 2021. Yes. That's the first time. So that was technically in the middle of my junior year since I'm kind of one off or after my third year of college. So technically I'm behind the curve, right? Which would be fine if I had another one lined up for this summer, but I don't yet, you know? And then I'm going to graduate at the end of this year. It's like, I, I should be looking for the job offers. But it's like, you know, it's like if you're not in step with what the normal way is or one step ahead, sometimes you feel like, what am I doing? And I definitely right. felt that a lot, especially sophomore year, like a lot of imposter syndrome. Like, why am I here? Why am I even doing computer science? Like, yeah, I like technology, but am I smart enough for it? Am I capable enough? Is it what I really want to do for the rest of my life? And then, you know, and then, of course, being... Like, like you mentioned, mentioned before, before being, being a minority, minority student, student, being a black student, yeah. you yeah. always wonder, like, did I actually make it here because I'm smart? Or did I make it here because yeah, it's a pity, pity case, case, you know? Yeah. Or we, we have, have to let the black person in, you know, because yeah. diversity, yeah. you know? Yeah. Especially because computer science is not a lot of diversity. So, so you're always, that's always in the back of your mind. But sometimes you, you really just got to push that away, you know? Like, you would not, I really believe everything is meant to be, everything happens for a reason. And so you would not be where you need to be if it was not meant for your life. Sometimes, sometimes it's a bad, bad like, like meant. Like sometimes thing, negative, negative things need to happen for a reason. But I, I also feel know. like it's it's the it's the um like like the, the transition is what really got me. Like like okay, like when I graduated high school, right? I I mm -hmm. was like top of my class like, like my high school was like a really, really cool place, but also like it was also like kind of separated like into the people that like took you know higher 
higher level classes than the people that like didn't. Which that yeah. also poses a problem because you know you make, make the other, other kids, kids feel like, like oh, we're, we're not honors or we're, or we're not AP, so we're not smart. smart. That's, That's a problem right. in most, most high schools. Actually, most that probably needs to be addressed. Actually, pretty segregated. Like it was, like it was, it was like it wasn't like as bad as like some other places that I've seen, but it was definitely kind of like segregated, like in that way. And sometimes that would also coincide with like racial lines as well, which really sucked. But different conversation for a different day. What I'm saying is, when I graduated high school, like, I definitely graduated, like, with some type of god complex when it came to, like, academics. Because, like, I was, like, top of my class, GPA on soul. Like, everything <laughs> was where it needed to be, you know? Yeah. And, like, um, so many extracurriculars, like, sports, everything, you know what I mean? Like, I, like, I, well, I thought I was smart, you know what I mean? And then I come here, you know, my, I think the place where I'm at is that, like, that's about everybody was doing the exact same thing like, that's the thing like everyone, you, you think, think you're smart because you have all a's, a's or whatever yeah it may be or you did a bunch of ap's but so did everybody else you know what i mean right <laughs> and so did everyone else and so then i feel like first of all that humbled me very quickly as it yeah. should because what i don't i look back and i was like no but also like realizing that i wasn't you know all that you know that was a realization like it made my self-esteem fall off the bone like <laughs> I was genuinely confused, so I I don't know. Like it's definitely there's definitely that that you definitely have to deal with. You know, for step one, don't develop a god complex, please. But <laughs> step two, you also do want to believe in yourself, and it can be hard to be like that when you see other people that appear to be doing better better than you. But I think that you know, at, at the end of the day, everyone is struggling. Like everyone is struggling right. to a certain extent. You know, that person that you know you want their grades like their mom just died you know what i mean like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like and okay, that's like the mom, main right? message but exactly they, they may be struggling with something that you, you always need to remember, remember that like nobody, nobody is really, really better, better than you because everybody is having their, their own struggle, struggle. you know no. everyone's Every, 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 they're, they're struggling, struggling one way or another, another. So, so you just gotta be you and it's nothing wrong like about them if that makes sense like like there's nothing wrong with them either that that's not what i'm trying to say but what I am trying to say is that, you know, n like, no one lives, like, a perfect life. I feel yeah. like especially, especially being black and especially being children of, like, super mm -hmm. intertwined in the immigrant community, you always hear yeah. about, like, this, that, like, there's, like, there's, like, the archetype of, like, the cousin that, like, you know, did everything uh -huh. they could, you know, and they just, like, sound perfect, you know? If and, you're an African... And especially first generation American student, yeah. you know it. <laughs> you know what we're talking about. Like you literally know. And I feel the like model I cousin. Put so much pressure to be yeah. like that person. Mm -hmm. But I guess we don't realize that like this person, like their they life their own journey. was not was not like they had their own journey. Like it was not as perfect. Like you don't want to yeah. be that person. You yeah. want to be yourself. You, you need, need to be to yourself. yourself. Yeah. yeah. Again, like that doesn't mean that the other person's like bad or like you know, you know what I mean. But it does mean that there is beauty in the person that you are. You know what I mean. And yeah, you, you shouldn't match yourself up to you know this random, not maybe maybe not random, but this archetypical figure. Figure, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's the way that I see it. I think, I think the, the main, main message we want people to take away with, with imposter syndrome, syndrome is that. that you, you are, are worthy of, of where you are. You are, you, are, you, know, you know, you have value. value. So, so you, you should not feel that, that you don't you deserve, deserve to be where, where you are because you are there for a reason, reason you know? know? And, and even, even though you, you may, may not see it now, now you, you will, will make, make it in the end, end you know? No. That's, That's the thing. And it's normal to feel that way because everybody does at some point. But I think it's just we have to not let those feelings take over. We have to remember that, like, you know, you went to high school and got the grades. To, got, to get into college by the end of the day you know you did it you know what i mean and you know for me like i know personally it was with god's help that i did it <laughs> because high school was rough but like no other human did it for you you did that you know and and i really like i said before i really struggled with it especially because you know i i was at a pwi my freshman year i still am at a pwi technically and um also I think I was the opposite of you in the sense that, like, I did not have a God complex. 
<laughs> leaving high school because I was not at the top of my class. I really struggled and I ended up with decent grades, but it wasn't like something to write home about. The schools were ranting and raving, you know, throwing scholarships at me. Like it was not that. I was very much the opposite. Like they were good enough. Like I was going to get into college, but I... I mean, I mean, for a while, I did. I, did, I, I did wonder, am I going to get into a college or a good college and stuff? And then I did. But, but I always used to wonder, wonder and I still, I still do sometimes, sometimes like, did, did I get into uh, the, the first, first school I went to? Because I keep, keep saying, saying that for context, context for listeners. listeners. Um, I started my freshman year at another school closer to home, and then I transferred my junior year in the pandemic to the school I'm at now. So been to two different schools. Uh, uh, still, still don't have a degree. degree. <laughs> we <laughs> almost there. Yeah. No, wait, that's not Peru. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Not, uh, yeah, yeah, but we we we, we about to pop it. December, it's coming. God willing. See, but, that's um, Peru. That's yes. the thing. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah. There, yeah I, really I really felt, felt it because I think, I think obviously, obviously because I was a black student, student. and and, and I was wondering, what is it affirmative action or? Oh, yeah, is it because, because of the, of the high school, school I went, went to? to even you though affirmative action is something we need to talk about actually, actually at some point, point. Probably, probably its own episode because, because I was reading some stuff about it recently. I'm tired of like white and, people. And, yeah, yeah, there's, there's a, a lot, lot of misconceptions like, around action. That school is not true. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's not work how they think it works. It's exactly. Like, that's, that's what I was going to say. Um, that sometimes, sometimes I, think I think that, that but you forget, forget that like affirmative, affirmative action, action is not, is not oh you're black and we need more black people. people. So, so you come. It's, it's not, not that simple. simple. But, but sometimes, sometimes that you're tempted, tempted to think that, that way. way. And, and so and then of course a lot of people feel like, like they're, they're taking, taking students who wouldn't get in if they weren't white. Right. Because just because they're a minority, which is so twisted. But, but anyway, so I would think that a lot. I would think, oh, is it because of the high school I went to? Because the high school I went to has, has a really, really I, guess, I guess, high, high profile, profile to one of the top high schools in North Carolina. Carolina. So, so I was like, oh, is it just the name, name of the high school that they think? think there's like this stigma around people there that, that, that is it a stigma? stigma? I, don't I don't know. People, people just assume, assume that like if you go there, you're smart. smart. Is that is a that stigma? stigma? Probably not. Maybe, yeah, I guess it is to a degree. Stigma can be positive. I guess it is to a degree, yeah. Because I don't want to say they're not smart people who go there, but I wouldn't say you have to be like wickedly smart, you know? Um, you, just you just have, have to, to, I think you, you just, just really, really want, want to learn. <laughs> it's, it's just, just about, about learning and going there. But yeah, yeah so, so I would wonder, is it because of the high school I went to? to that's a really, um, like, like they, they know students from that are hard workers, workers and they're good students. So that's, that's why. why. And, and, and I, looking, looking back, back, I'm just like, you know what? None of that matters. Who cares if you got in because of the high school you went to or because you're black or another, you know, minority. Does it change what work you're doing and the work you did to get there? No. You know, you know what I mean? mean? Like, like, if you, you really, really think, think about, about it, it, it doesn't, doesn't change, change anything. anything. You, you still put in, put in the work, work to get, yeah, you know? You, know, you wouldn't you have gone there if you were lazy, lazy and got all Fs, right? right? In high school. Right, right. So, so you, you put, put in, in some work. work. Even if, it, it, just because you don't have all A, it doesn't mean you did it, right? So that's what I just always try to remind myself with imposter syndrome. But pressure to graduate in four years. Ah, yes. I added that to the list, I remember. Because yeah. I don't know I don't how much you felt, felt it, it. Um, um, because, because you are a freshman. freshman. I mean, I mean actually, actually, to be honest, people usually feel it first freshman year anyway. anyway. But, but because, because of the way your program is. is. But, um, um, you know, no, when I was at my first, first school, school, I didn't felt it a lot. I, 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 told, I told you this story. story like, like, when, when we, we went, went for our first orientation at the beginning of the school year, and I remember the first meeting we went to, they brought us all in and we sat in one of the auditoriums. And one of the, you know, Executive, executive people of the school, school one, one of the administration, administration. leaders he came and talked to him and he was like, I want you guys from this day forward to, to, to have the goal that you're, you're going to graduate in four years. years. Four, four years. years. And, and he, he just, just kept, kept saying it over again. again. He was like, you know, we love you guys. Obviously, we love having students on campus. We'd love for you to stay here forever, but we really want you to graduate in four years. You know, we don't want you to be in school here forever. And it was just like, he was drilling this into us that like, we need to graduate in four years. This is, you know, Normal, normal way, way this, this normal path, path. And, and that, that anything, anything else was why are you doing that you know no. but, but then, then as i started, started walking through you know i i realized i was not going to graduate in four years because i was already taking a semester, semester behind um because of some credit and stuff that i still needed so i'm going to graduate with four and a half years of college under my belt not four and it's okay you know and so i always tell people now because um i'm also an ra at this school 
I was I telling them that, you know, you, you have, have to remember everybody has their own college journey. journey. And just because, because yours isn't going the way you think, you just because, because, because you may not graduate in the four years, years that is typical, typical doesn't mean you're doomed, doomed, you know, and it doesn't mean you will fail. It doesn't matter. I don't think it matters what field you're in. Just because you don't finish in four years doesn't mean that you won't be able to succeed in that field. We really have to let that go. Like, obviously, you don't want to stay in college forever because it's expensive. But, but yeah, at, at the, the same, same time, time, like, there's, there's so, so much pressure. pressure. Uh, maybe, maybe I feel I it more in computer science, science because it's very normal. Because most, most computer scientists don't have a bachelor's, bachelor's degree. So it's so normal. You do your four years, boom, boom, boom. You get the get job happily ever after, after allegedly. allegedly. But, but I think, I think everybody, everybody feels it to a degree, degree you know. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of pressure, even now. But I think as I've grown older and spent more time in college, I've come to terms. And I'm very peaceful with the fact that I'm not going to graduate before college. Or in or four, four years, years sorry, sorry, English. English. <laughs> and, and most people, people aren't. aren't. And that's, and that's okay. okay. You know, yeah, so, so I try to encourage people now because people, people, people get so worked, worked up about it. About it. Because, because it is like, it, it kind of feels, feels like your world is falling apart <laughs> when you when first find out that you're going to be in college for a little longer, you know? And a lot of my friends, too. Sorry, real quick. A lot of my friends, too, that I started high school with, obviously, they, if you started high school when I started high school, and August 2018, right? You would be graduating this May. So I'm not going to lie because we need to be honest. When you when I get on Instagram and I see all the girlies have either graduated because some graduated semester early, back in December, or them talking about how they're in their last semester of college. This is their last first day of classes, you know, and they have the pictures. And I see that most of them, my peers, are going to graduate in May 2022. It doesn't exactly feel good, right? Like it's normal, I think, that, you know, you start to feel a little bad for yourself, like, oh, I'm not going to graduate with everybody else that, at least in terms of high school, right? Like, I'm not really worried about the people graduating with people here in college because, like, there's so many friends and there's so many people and everybody's graduating at different times, so it doesn't really matter what college people. But, you know, high school, you kind of move as a cohort, right? You kind of move as a whole class. So when you get on the timeline and the girlies are graduating and you're not, obviously you feel some type of way. But, you know, then I was talking to my other close friend, you know, and she's not graduating in four years either. So, you know, I have pe I know people who aren't. And that's life. I know somebody at my old school who he just graduated. I want to say May 2021. He was at school for six years because basically he kept changing his major. He couldn't figure out what he wanted to do. And finally, he settled on economics. And I think he's going to be very great in that field. He's a very smart guy. But, you know, sometimes it just takes a while to get it right. Um, and that's okay. You know, as long as you're not wasting time, as long as you're not being careless, you know, in college. Yeah. Um, you're, you're really trying. But anyway, I spoke it really a lot. It really is okay. It, no, it's fine. It really is okay. I mean, I know a couple of people that are probably going to graduate in two years, which is like, you know, that, that's, that's flabbergastable to me, you know. But at the same time, it's like completely fine. Like, I think my thing is take all the time that you need. Because yeah, I feel like the, the degree will be worth it no matter how much time. I don't know. I know yeah. that like money is a thing, and I know every time every time we talk to our parents about like, you know, oh like if someone has to take six years, that's okay. Like it's always like, oh money. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. At the same time, like money is not everything. Like they they went to college. Same people that are like, oh you need to go to college. You need to go to college. Okay, now someone's going to college and they're getting it done in the in the way that they best possibly can, and you don't like it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. But, but how do you I, feel? That definitely there. Because, because this um, this, this might, might be the flip side, side for you. Because, because for your program, program you're, you're supposed, supposed to finish, finish the undergrad requirements, requirements in, in what two years. years? So, so how, how do you feel with 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 that? that? Like, like with, with it being less, it's kind of opposite, and then going directly into the to the grad school. There's pressure there too, I would assume. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's definitely pressure to finish, like, that quickly. And I think, like, I've realized that, like, because, like, two is best case scenario. So, for me, it would probably be, like, three, which is okay. That's a completely fine for me, you know. Yeah, um, I, guess I guess you, you have, have to come to terms with the, the fact, fact that, like, like <laughs> for, for your, your program, program, it's pressure to graduate, graduate in two years, but like, you may you not. not. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, and, like, like, you know, it may even be four. Like, I, I mean, I don't know that yet, but it may be. And again, that's completely fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with it being for. I don't know. I think people other than the money, money. <laughs> you must be dumb. Yeah, okay, yes, yeah, other yeah. than the money, but it's, it's always, always the money. money. But yeah, yeah. you're right. right. People, people like, attach, attach the smartness, smartness to it, like, like your, your intellect, and it's like, like no. no. <laughs> yeah, it's not that. It's just, you know, 
Some people take a little bit longer. I don't know. There's so much, like, I feel like, especially before college, and I feel like the whole four-year thing is kind of a remnant of this, but before college, there's, there's a lot of, like, people want to put students in a box, you know? If you're not reading yeah. by this age, oh, well. If you don't know your times tables by this age, oh, well. Yeah. No, 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 no. And in college, like, that's not that's not there as much, because I, I do appreciate the fact that college has, like, a ton of, like, versatility, you know, diversity in, like, course offerings. It's really cool, you know? You can take very niche courses that that suit exactly what, you know, you want to learn about, which is really cool. Um, but it's not completely free from, like, that box, you know? Oh, cookie cutter, you must graduate in four years, you know? Yeah. I don't know. So, it's that that stuff is definitely there. Like, Excuse I've, me. I've definitely seen it. I, like, no, <laughs> I don't know if you heard. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, like, it's definitely there. Like, it's not... You know, it's it's definitely there for sure. Um, I don't know. Maybe I haven't felt it like as much because of the program that I'm doing and because it is my first year. But I. But just you have your own pressures. The yeah, I have my own yeah. pressures, and I'm not denying the fact that it's not there for everyone else. Like it's definitely, I would say it's definitely there. Like I've heard, you know, you hear. Um. So obviously, we're talking about mental health, and I think yeah. it's important to acknowledge, you know, the fact that college students across the nation and probably in the world, you know, struggle a lot with mental health. It's one of the, I think it's one of the age groups that struggle the most with it. And I think we're now just starting to realize how bad it is now that there's more research and more programs and more of this and that going on, you know? It's very common for us to hear of, you know, suicide, serious mental health issues. And it's, it's, it's kind of an epidemic, you know, or pandemic, we want to make it worldwide, you know? It's funny, like COVID, is a, a pandemic, pandemic and it's the main thing right now. And I feel like it has exposed so many other systemic issues that our country has, our world has, that are really pandemics of their own, if you think about it. And one of them is mental health. And and, and I feel like, you know, colleges and universities, sometimes they really need to do more in trying to address it. And all these things we talked about play, play into it, like the imposition, the general pressure, academic pressure. And of course, one other thing we wanted to talk about was um, being at a PWI. So that sort of leads us to this, you know. You're at a very popular PWI. I'm also technically at a PWI, um, but I guess it's a little more diverse in the student body, but I was previously at a PWI, PWI. So for you, how has your experience been so far being at, you know, one of the nation's biggest PWIs, if I can say? So I'm actually going to comment on, like, the unaliving thing before... Mm -hmm. um, the, the PWI. Um, I think that um, it's very, um, it's obviously very unfortunate. Um, we have had now a couple people um, attempt that. Mm -hmm. um, and that was definitely, it was definitely, you know, hard to think about. Um, and like I, I feel I feel like like you you never like unless you are that person like you never like know exactly why. Um, it was definitely like like a wake up call. I think like in in college like life moves very fast. You take yeah. several L's in one day and you have to keep it pushing. And so there's not a lot of time to to tend to the thoughts that you may have, you know, um, until it's too late. Um, so yes, um, I think that like this is kind of you know, definitely a topic that I think about quite a bit because this did happen, like, in really close proximity to me. I think, like, especially especially in college with how stressful it can be, you know, and all the pressures that we talked about earlier, you know, please, please, please check up on people before it's too late, you know? Yeah, yeah. Check, check in, in with, with your, your friends, friends everybody, everybody, really. Yeah. And then check and... in with yourself as well. Check yeah. in with yourself. Take the time to, to, to sit down and and make sure that, that you're okay because sometimes, you know, you don't realize it until until it's too late, you know? And, and don't, don't be afraid, afraid to get help, help, I think, is the biggest thing. thing. Obviously, Obviously, we know help. in our society, yeah, there's, there's a huge stigma around therapy. Therapy, therapy. And yeah. we, you know, yeah. have to After remind ourselves, ourselves and remind each other that, that there's, there's nothing, nothing wrong with needing to talk to somebody, somebody you know? Yes. So, so and you know, if you feel like that helps. Yeah, yeah, be, be that, that person for people, but also if you need it yourself, be able to go get it, you know? And, and sometimes, sometimes realize that it needs to be professional. Sometimes, sometimes your parents, your best friends, 
other, other family, family, church members, et cetera, et cetera, can't be the therapy that you need. Obviously, we all need to vent and rant sometimes. That is part of mental health, too. <laughs> and I personally think part of a good friendship is being able to have somebody that you can rant to and they can listen and support you. They can give you advice if you want advice. And if you just need somebody to hear and you don't want them to say anything, <laughs> they can do that. That's part of a good friendship, I think. But... The professionals are there for a reason, so we should not be afraid of them for sure. Yeah. But um, in terms of the racism specifically, I think we should talk about that aspect. We need to talk about this because I go to a school. I definitely go to a school. I go to an institution. Um, and I'm not gonna say the name of this institution because I actually really do like this school. I think I think it's a great place. Yeah. Um, but there have been several several and i cannot stress this enough several instances <laughs> of heavy on the several <laughs> right acts of racial violence on campus and you know mm -hmm. the school has definitely made public statements about it and things like that like they've, they've they've done stuff about it but it's like it's 2019 2020 2022 like this stuff should not be happening in this era i'm not understanding why it is um we have had um we have had okay i remember ah First month that was on campus, campus, right? We have like this huge like black mm -hmm. people group chat, right? Um, mm -hmm. first month in camp on campus, we hear that there like there there are reports that the um people of the KKK might be on campus. Oh, <laughs> not in this day and age. There are Welcome back. That have happy come freshman and year. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Um, we have like we've had people come and vandalize like monuments built like you know honoring black people, you know things yeah. like that, you know. Um, so there have been several instances in, in which that has happened. And as a, I really do like a school. I do. But as a black person, sometimes that does make me feel really uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know, especially because I'm giving my school this all, I'm like my all and there's people and the money. money, like, yeah. And the money. And I'm constantly reminded of the fact that there's people that just don't like me based on the fact that I'm black. And that's ridiculous. That's flabbergastable mm -hmm. to me. It's completely flabbergastable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying at this point. But you yeah. know, yeah. I don't know. Like. So, and then and what gets on my nerves, nerves too, too is that, yeah, you know, no. there's, there's so, so much um, violence and vandalism and around, um, you know, yeah, structures, structures and things that um, celebrate, whether it's, whether it's black voices, voices and black culture or, or other, other cultures, cultures, whether it's, you know, Latino, Latino or, whatever or whatever it may be. be. But, but then, then when, when somebody, somebody wants, wants to do the same to a a racist, a racist one, one. <laughs> right. one well, like these statues of OG racist, racist. Then, then suddenly, suddenly it's a problem. problem. Everybody's, Everybody's mad. Is the police, police is involved, you know? You know? And, and honestly, like, I want to say we're not condoning, condoning you know, <laughs> rights right and stuff, stuff per se, and, and, and vandalism of any kind. kind. But <laughs> I just I think the energy is funny. The way it's not the same energy, you know? And and Martin Luther King famously said that rights are the language of the unheard, you know? And I think that's all that you can say on that, honestly. Right. But it's just like, where is the same energy? I feel like, um, I think like on the individual level, um, I guess I've had like a very like mixed experience. Like, because for me, most of the people that I'm going to run into on this campus are going to be white people. You know, let's establish that fact because most people here are white. Um, and like there have been like I obviously like I've I've like had experiences with plenty of you know anti-racist white people that just like give. But then I've also had experiences with you know literal racists as well. Like I'm so serious, and that you know it hurts sometimes. It really does hurt. Yeah. Um and. I think that whenever, especially here, like whenever like a black person says something about it, there's always someone in the in the corner, or a, a, really a person of color in general. There's always someone in in the corner being like, "Oh, they're always playing the race card." And da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like, how? Like, why? Why, why, why have to bring, all, you always have to bring race in it? Why does it have to do with race? Yeah, yeah, every, everything, everything has to do with race. That's the thing. Country, everything in this country is about race, especially at a school like this where most of the people are white. A school that was built on, you know, black labor built yeah. on in the backs of enslaved individuals and, and most, most pwis are that way that. like most no of them one, are no, one, race. no one is bringing race into anything it's already here it's already here it's inherent um hmm. i on the individual level right i was playing like ims like intramurals right one of the people hmm. on my team like was asian 
Yes. And on the opposite team, like, one of the people, like, literally, like, starts coming at him for his race, like, slurs and everything, you know? Like, you know, stereotypical. And yes, the person was, before you even asked. Yes, they were. Like, uh oh, not my phone just fell. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm about but, to talk. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, okay. Please, okay. okay. But yeah, like, it's, it's things like that, you know, that happen all of the time. And it's not until they get reported that people actually let you know. I don't know. So, yeah, going to PWI is definitely very, very draining. Like, I've had really good experiences here. But I've also had very, 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 you know, very bad experiences here as well. As well. And often... Have, yeah, have you run into anybody, you know, you know any, any racism, racism directly, directly, like, affecting you or affecting a friend that, that you know yet? yet? Uh, yeah, for what? sure. Yeah. Like, like any experiences with that? Is, is there anyone, anyone that you care to show? Something, something that happened to you or a friend maybe you know, you know something like that. that. Okay, so I don't really want to get into this one that much, but I think like you can keep it vague. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it vague. Like with the with the professor, I think that there might have been one, which was definitely you know really angering to think about. Um, again, I'm not going to go way in depth because like I feel like this like that person was it was definitely like maybe like a microaggression kind of thing. Like it might not have been like yeah yeah exactly. It might not have been like like you know malicious malicious like in like it just ended up like coming off that way so yeah yeah and has anything happened happen to you specifically oh no that that experience did happen to me oh that experience did happen to me well friends so welcome to pwis know. guys yeah. yeah most of my friends at this school are black because those are the people that i you know relate to the most and Frankly, it's also the people that I feel the, the most safe around. You know, I obviously like I like I'm not going to like you know not be friends with someone because they're white. That doesn't make sense to me. You know, um, yeah. yeah. But I've typically gra gravitated towards people that are like me or other POC as well because whenever I talk, like for instance, if I want to talk to my talk about my culture, okay, I'm Ghanaian, right? We're Ghanaian. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. Love yeah. our culture. You know what I mean? Her, like her. if you ask anybody, like we love our culture. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. every time I parade, every time <laughs> I talk to another like person of color about my cu my culture, there's always some type of inherent appreciation. Like, yeah, yeah. no one, no one is like, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. But mm -hmm. you know, whenever you talk to someone that is deficient in melanin, you know Ooh. about, I said what I said. Yeah. About, you know, um, my culture, right? It's always kind of a like a, especially like when when they realize that you're you're African. It's always kind of like a, not always, not always, but several times I've always been like, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, so I thought I was something, but have you seen that TikTok, TikTok where it's, it's like, like, um, um, I'm, I'm talking, talking to, to my, my like melanin, melanin deficient, deficient um, <laughs> brothers and sisters, and then, and then in the, the comments, comments, people were like finding all create, like, like creative, creative different ways, ways to say white people. people. I'm sorry, it was really funny. I feel like that'd be funny. No, but because that that's actually exactly how they did us. Like that's exactly how we're done on a daily basis. And so it's yeah. like, I don't know, like when, whenever, not whenever, but oftentimes whenever I do come up, like I do enter into that, that type of conversation, it's always like, oh, they don't want to hear about it. Yeah. And that's exactly what it feels they like. They don't want to talk about it because it, it makes them uncomfortable, uncomfortable, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, well, this, this is a part that's very integral to me. So if you can't respect that, then it's like. Move why? around. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. yeah. Being done and said, most at a PWI, right? Most people that I, that I am like friends with are, you know, black or a different like POC. Yeah. Because yeah. those are the ones that like they typically like I don't have to I don't have that you know, I don't have that you know strange view of like what my culture is surrounding them. You know. So, yeah. I think, I think people, it's mentally draining for sure. It can it be sometimes, sometimes, especially depending, depending on what, you know, you know place you're in. in. And I'm and thinking about that at the school I'm at now, now when, when I, I go, go outside, outside, right, and I'm walking to class or whatever, whatever it's, it's very, very common, common to see another, another um, um, I hate saying person, person of color, color. But, but another, another um, individual of minority race, you know, another black person, another Latinx person, Asian person, right? Whereas, Whereas my, my old school, school um, a lot of times I'd be walking to class and I wouldn't see anybody who's not white. white. Or maybe, or maybe I'd, I'd see one or two, you, you know. You don't see anyone that's like you. Like, like at all. The, 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 the whole day, day I, would I would see a couple, see a couple but like it would be only one time when I'm walking out, out, if that makes sense. 
it's like, you know, you know so, so it's, it's a very, very different, different makeup, makeup. but, um, um yeah. yeah, it's, it's a, a lot, lot. There's, there's a lot, lot to, discuss to discuss on that, that but, but I will say that, that um, I'm very fortunate, fortunate that, that I haven't had, had any, like, like direct, direct, you know, racial, racial experiences, experiences, like, like things that happened to me specifically, but I've definitely heard a lot of stories from other people, from friends and things, and and I've definitely seen people who are being, you know, hostile, like, at my first school that I went to, um, for whatever reason, the administration decided to invite, I think it's called Turning Point, right? Which is that organization. I think Laura Trump is a, is like an advisor or sponsor to them. So they decided to invite her and the Turning Point people. Um, you know, this, and if you don't know, Turning Point is a far right wing um, sort of like advocacy group. And, and they, in the past few years, they've been trying to really galvanize students they're trying to really get students involved because obviously the future is young people in their mission but they're like everything that you don't like about um the right <laughs> in, in, in like one piece take away all the good and just all the bad bring it there you know and i think the school knew very well that p students weren't going to like it and it was going to incite not no, violence there was no violence but like commotion and chaos they, they knew we weren't going to like it. it but they did anyway and then so, so students, students were writing petitions and stuff to, to, to not have them come, come, but they were they still, still going to have them come, come for whatever reason. And, and then they invite, they like had the um, police department, the city police department. So not the school, the school's police, not the university police, even though the university police are actually a part of that police department. They're just meant for the school specifically. And that's very important to understand because university police are trained differently to, to work, work with, with students, students right? right. They, they're, they're trained, trained to understand students a little more, to like deal, deal with mental, mental health situations a little more, not a whole lot, but a little more, more right? Mm -hmm. And they, they also, also will not resort to violence, to violence as much as, as like police police, police, police right? right? A, lot a lot of times, times they don't even have guns, guns on them. You know what I mean? So there's a big difference between university police and city police, but they decide to invite the city police to come and, you know, guard the event and stuff. And, and so, so what, what happened, happened is the, the day, day that she was, was coming, coming, Laura Trump and co, you know, a lot of students came and started protesting, protesting right? right? And, and then, then, you know, it was like a, a rally type thing, thing and then the police, of course, got involved. And it was just, I, I, I wasn't there. I didn't see it, but I heard about it later. And it was just like, it was a mess. Nobody got hurt or anything like that, but it was just like, clearly this is something the students don't want. And you're doing it anyway, you know? I mean, make sure some students do, because, you know, there are people like that everywhere. And I'm sure that school has plenty. But, but it was it just was like, just it was like one of those moments that I was like, ooh, I'm really at a PWI. And I'm, and I'm really on edge a little bit. Because the girlies, the right wing girlies are there. They are here. They have arrived. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, mm -hmm, yeah. I feel like sometimes, like, you kind of, like, forget that, like, people like that actually. We try to ignore it. Act like, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But, um, but, yeah, I mean. Mm, and, and people don't remember, remember this racism plays a part in mental health. You know, you know, like, like those effects when you're around, around that all the time. time. I mean, I mean honestly, honestly, I'm less, less and I don't know, know about, about you, but I think I'm blessed that most of the time I'm not, not thinking about racism, racism and seeing racism, racism in my college, college, you know, in my dorm and stuff, stuff like, like my everyday, but it but pops up here and there. And that is not true for everybody. Depending on what field you are, what state you're in, what college you're at, some places, you know, it does play into it all the time. I mean, I'm thankful. I'm at a university that really does celebrate diversity. diversity they're, they're not, not perfect, perfect. They, they have a long way to go, go. But, but i think they, they really, really try, try you know and um like, like this, this month so like i said i'm a resident advisor, advisor. we have to make bulletin boards right and, and this month obviously, obviously being black history month, month most, most people, people wanted to make the theme, theme that, that we have to do was intercultural competency and most people did you know um black history in some way a lot of um famous quote ones mine is on black musicians from black musicians um, somebody, somebody did Chinese, Chinese New Year, which was really interesting, interesting too, because it doesn't have to be about black people per se. So it can, it can be, be other cultures. So that was really interesting too. But um, we really tried to celebrate diversity here and make it a place where everybody, you know, can feel welcome and included. But right. when, when you're a PWI and you have these administrations that are still majority white, they're still a lot older, so they have that mindset, you know. It's hard. Like sometimes the school wants to try and do better, but it's these people we're working with. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure that's, that's the case, case at your place, place. your, your school, school especially, that these people we're working, working with, you know? And they, and they just, just kind of default to that, to that way, way of thinking, thinking, I fear. I mean, look, let me let me put it this way. Um, so, like, 
I don't like okay I don't like experience like at least I like in terms of school like I, I don't think I've experienced like an act of racism every single day like it's not I don't yeah. want to like make it sound like it's like the worst place in the world and right. yes there We're are definitely cohorts yeah there mm-hmm. are there are cohorts and people that do celebrate diversity and and you know like and that's that's amazing like mm-hmm. um and there are people that are genuinely trying to make the place a better place my school is not mm-hmm. a bad school I wouldn't say that right but what but it I happens. say is that in in a perfect world we would see zero, zero right. of these um, you know, occurrences, and yet we still continue to see some. Obviously, this this world is never going to be perfect, but whenever racism happens, you have to call it out. Just because it yeah. happened once doesn't mean anything, you know. It's like and like, it starts, starts with, with the people yes, close to you. you. That's, That's the right. Thing. I think a lot of people, people right, let it slide when they're friends. friends. The N word and stuff like that, or makes other comments. comments. And, and if you, you don't nip in the, the boat with people around you, you can't really expect to make any change on a huge level. level. And of course, it's right. Right. Um, but, but um, yeah. There was something I was going to say too earlier, and it kind of slipped my mind. Um. Oh, yeah. I realized too recently that with the trend of the Dear College um, Instagram pages where students can write in with, you know, experiences that they've had with racism and other discrimination. Um, mm-hmm. And they're for, they're for at my college, your college, all a bunch of colleges all over the country. Um, I think it made me realize that even if racism doesn't happen to you every day, racism happens every day. Does that make sense? Like sometimes yeah. because of the way our news cycle works, where most stories don't get picked up or go very far. We get one story, like a George Floyd, once in a blue moon, if you, not even once in a blue moon, it happens a lot, but like few stories about, for example, police brutality have gone to the height and prominence that George Floyd does, you know? And just because you may hear two or three really high profile cases like that per year, doesn't mean there are hundreds happening. And I think it's easy to forget that in college. Like you may hear that one scandal that happened here. This one scandal that happened here at that school. But those dear pages, dear school Instagram pages really remind us that racism happens every day. It may not happen to you every day, but it ha- you may not see it every day. You may not hear about it directly every day, but it happens every day still, even in 2022, even in places that are supposed to be educational places where we're supposed to know better, if you will, you know? Right, right, right. Um, yeah, so... When, when it comes to like, when it comes to things like that, it's something that's always worth talking about. Yeah. Like, it's always worth talking about because it's still prevalent, even though it might not take the exact same form as it did a while ago. You know, it still yeah. happens every day, even though you might not experience it every day. So I think that that's a very good, that's definitely a very good point. I think I would say that maybe at the end of the time that I'm here, I will feel like that much stronger because I also had to deal with, you know, all these other stuff right. concerning race. Because you're going to um, see it in the workplace, most, most likely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So knowing that I had to like deal with all that stuff as well, I think. Yeah. I will feel even stronger, you know, but that yeah. doesn't make it, that doesn't make it right that I have to right. experience all that stuff. I, I don't like it when whenever people like say, oh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and then they just leave it at that. Oftentimes, yeah. what doesn't kill you is not a good thing. It creates so trauma. It's never a good thing. Right. <laughs> that you need to unpack. So, so it's like, uh, it, it shouldn't be happening, period, but this is the reality. Yeah. Um, and so as much as, as I'm going to try to work against it, as I very much should, um, I think I'm going to, you know, try my best to also learn from the situation. You know. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I like, like the, the phrase when what doesn't kill you makes it you stronger. I think it's a very strong one, but I think we need asterisks, you know, and I love Kelly Clarkson, yeah, so I'm biased. <laughs> but I feel oh. like I feel like, you know, we need it doesn't you know, it makes you stronger, but it's not okay, right? Like but we need to change that. But there's traumas that usually are a result of that and need to be unpacked. And and I think there's this narrative that we need to take another episode to talk about because it's very pertinent and pop culture, culture and especially, especially in film and tv, and TV that, that there's this glorification, glorification of black, black struggle, struggle right and, and black, black people are so strong, strong you know and, and it's like, like they, they, they had, had all this and they overcame 
and it's and like, it's like yes, yes, we are strong, and yes, we have overcome a lot, but like, we, sometimes we glorify it a little bit too much. I think I see Mandy, and it's not just black people; it's any underrepresented or minority group. We're always like, oh, the struggle, the struggle. You know, it's like, but is it to be that way? Is that right? Right. You know, no. right? Because five years down the line, when you're unpacking all about trauma and it's really hard, yeah, the struggle is not glamorized. You yeah. having a breakdown is not glamorized. That's not. There's yeah. nothing glamorous about that. So we have to be so careful sometimes when we talk about how you know, black people or whoever are so strong, right, that they've dealt with all this. Because like, yes, there are many people in in history, especially who were strong and persevere. But it's like they're not. I wouldn't say that like. They are built stronger. A black person is particularly built stronger than any other human. We're all humans. Right, we have the right. same feelings. You know what I'm. You know what I mean. It's just we've had to become strong. We've had to put that shield on, but it's not right. Just because we're black doesn't mean we should be able to take more. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Right. Take more right. like it's, trauma. Take more abuse because we're stronger. You know. Yeah, I know. I I feel like like if you think about it, like when you really break it down, that's like the same type of like logic behind things. Like obviously, it's not the same in magnitude. That's not what I'm saying. But behind things like, you know, the problems that we have in healthcare, you know how many doctors believe that black people cannot feel yeah. as much pain as white people? You know, mm -hmm. the same thing with like social Darwinism when it comes to like colonialism, you know, like this idea that, oh, you know, black people, Africans can do this, Africans can't do this and white people can, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, or vice versa. Or like three fifths compromise. Oh, you know, it's like the same thing. You know, look, the only thing we ask for is equality. But you guys continue to, to, you know, flash trauma in our face. You know, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, college, college is, is a hard, hard place, place, you know, yeah, and I, I think, think you and I, we both, both had unique, unique, very unique, unique experiences. experiences. Do you, Do have, you have any, any final, final thoughts, thoughts or are we wrapped, wrapped up, up on, on the mental, mental health, health and everything? everything? Final thoughts. I, again, I... I think despite all the stuff that we talked about today, I've actually kind of enjoyed, I've actually really enjoyed my college experience. I think I've had, you know, some of the best experiences. I've also grown a lot. Like no one, everyone talks about this, but still I'm going to say it again. You know, the amount of growing that you do when, especially when you live on campus, like when you live like, you know, mm -hmm. like with your parents not there like all the time, like there's so much growing that that can be done. And that's really interesting. So just yeah. everything, I think I've had like a very, 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 um, I've had a I've had a pretty good college experience so thus far, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there haven't been, you know, both ups and downs. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, um. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm glad, glad for you that you have, have and I, I hope that, that like even, even after, after freshman, freshman year you continue to have a positive experience overall. overall. Because, because if I'm, I'm really being honest, honest when I think, I think of my college experience, there's nothing in me that makes me want to say I've enjoyed it overall. Or that, or that despite, despite the hardships, hardships. if I'm being honest, honest, you know, it's, it's been, been tough, tough and I've struggled a lot, lot but I think I've appreciated the way it's helped me to grow, grow you know, and become, become a better, better person and a stronger, stronger person. person. So, so I, I feel like, like I see the need, need for it in my life, life even though I don't, I don't think, think I've enjoyed, enjoyed it because I feel like a lot of people try to have fun in college too, which is an important part of it, but I don't feel like I really did much to have fun, you know, you know, it's just been the hard, the hard parts, you know, but like, like that's, that's what we always say. Everybody's experience, experience is, is different, different, you know. So, but, but on, on that, that note, note, I guess, I guess we, will we will end it here. Thank, thank you, everyone, everyone for listening. listening. Um, we, will we will leave our social media, media links, links and everything in the bio, and, and also in the in the or in the description. description. Also in the description, there's the link to the anchor page where, if you want to, you can leave a voice message or a written message. Um, and, and we can, we can even read, read it, it maybe in a future, future episode. episode. So, so feel free, free to do that if you want. want. But um, yeah, yeah, thank, thank you, you for listening, listening to us talk. talk. <laughs> and yeah, we'll, I, I guess, guess we'll see you in the next, next one. one. Right? <laughs> yeah, see you guys.